Hey everybody, thanks for being here. This week we're at the southern tip of Baja hunting wahoo on the East Cape. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf and this is Angler West Television. We're running south from Los Barillas towards Cabo San Lucas to an area well known as a wahoo hole. We're with Mark Doherty of Eastcape Guides and Mick Saunders, creator of the Cushit and Leader Mate, who's focused on landing his first wahoo. We're hoping the unusual wet weather won't turn off the bite, but wahoo are voracious feeders, and they're already wet. So it's rare to see a rainbow down here, but looks like we're gonna be fishing for wahoo under a rainbow. So uh, we've run about an hour and a half south of Hotel Palmas de Cortez, and we've deployed a spread of deep diving baits and uh, a couple of inline sinker uh, fast trolling uh, wahoo rigs, and uh, we're seeing we're gonna, gonna get a little lucky here. So we hit them pretty hard last week, so we had about 50 wahoo in about four days. So uh, there's a few still out here, so. Hopefully we can get lucky. We call this area El Farolito. So there's a small lighthouse right here and there's some high spots. There's a couple of pinnacles that we troll back and forth and back and forth. And this is the Wahoo ground. So we were getting pretty big numbers last week here. So uh, um, when the conditions are right, the water's warm and these packs of Wahoo come in, it can really blow up here. So as I said, when we're high speed trolling for Wahoo, we have a variety of lures that we're using. So traditionally, we're using these deep divers, all different sizes, different colors. Some of the more popular covers, colors are the purple and black, pink and black. We also have bright colors if we have really sunny days. I actually like to put a little bit of reflective tape on the bills and then I'll paint over them with uh, fingernail polish. We get a lot of flash in the water. You can see here what happens after two wahoo, they do a little bit of damage on your deep divers. Then for high speed trolling, we run an inline sinker that actually gets our trolling lures here a little bit deeper in the water. The, the wahoo like subsurface lures, so they don't like those surface lures as much as those subsurface. So essentially this is just an inline torpedo sinker. We have 700 pound marine cable hooked up. The Wahoo will actually hit this when it's trolled at high speed, so we have to put cable with it. And that's connected to a shock leader here. So when we're trolling at high speeds, we def definitely need some stretch in the line or they'll break the, the main line. So that's connected. We have a 20 foot leader here of about 300 pound test connected to a snap swivel, three, 400 pound snap swivel, always stainless steel ball bearing. And then we connect that to either a high speed trolling lure here, bullet head lures that are weighted, or we go with an Islander that we rig up with a ballyhoo here, and then troll that at anywhere from 10 to 12 knots. With all of my deep diving trolling lures for Wahoo, I use these fish field split rings, that, and I always use the heaviest. So these are stainless steel, really heavy duty. I've been using them for years. Great action on all of my deep divers, and very, very secure. One little trick I do, is just a little bit of extra security is I'll super glue all the edges so we don't have any slippage where the cable will actually slip through the split ring right here. So these fish field uh, split rings are my favorite. We actually use this leader mate here to manage all of our leaders. Really easy to wrap your leader around and then just load it right in this little sleeve here, just like that. Now everything's secure, and now you don't have your, your inline sinker slamming up against everything on the boat. Keep 
welcome back, and I hope you're enjoying this week's episode from the East Cape of Baja, where we're hunting wahoo. Now, Mick Saunders has his first wahoo ever hooked up, and I guarantee you that your first big wahoo is an experience you'll never forget. Now, before we go back to see if Mick can land that fish, let's take a look at a few of the other fun things you can do on a trip to Los Barillas. Mick has brought his wife, Sheila, to Los Barillas, and even though she's not excited about going out on the boat, she's having a great time staying at the Hotel Playa del Sol, the Van Warmer Resort's smaller boutique hotel. Along with my wife, Ann, she's finding plenty to do while Mick's out fishing. Like walking down the beach to the Hotel Palmas de Cortez, where the wine and tequila bar is waiting. Here's the manager, Carolina Escamilla. Hi, how are you? Welcome to the wine bar. I hope you feel you find fine. I want to invite you to have a nice glass of wine or maybe a flight. Why not a bottle of wine? We have a delicious variety of Mexican wine. We are working directly with Valle de Guadalupe. What is really nice is very close from here, local wine. And we are trying to put Mexican wine because it's so delicious and one of the first. So tequila is really Mexican thing, right? You come in here, you have to try tequila. So you can come and try a flight of tequila, four different tequilas for only 240 pesos. So that's great, right? Cheap for you. And plus you can have a reposado, you can have silvers and also another reposado. And if you want looking for something more special, I have the extra añejos from Cabo Unico. Next door to the wine bar is Spalmas. It's where from personal experience, I can tell you is a great place for a massage. Hola. Hola. But Ann and Sheila have other plans. Okay. Uh -huh. In another face up. Anne has come for a facial, which is a long, complicated process that involves all sorts of strange things, but apparently is very enjoyable. Sheila has chosen the body scrub. This is organic. This is mango and letter sugar de morena more is excellent. Don't knock it till you try it, I guess, but do get a massage. Very wonderful. Thank you. Hunting an ATV or quad is my favorite thing to do in Baja besides fishing. On this day, I took Ann up to a nearby arroyo to do a little exploring. With the heavy rains of the past few days, which has limited the fishing, the desert is alive and a special place to be, even if it's a little soggy. So we rode the quads up here in this little arroyo. You can see the water. So last night, this was a raging stream. This is all different, because we came up here yesterday to mess around and, and it wasn't, you know, all the sand wasn't like this. So that's the thing about, if, if the storm was just coming and it looked like it was gonna rain, we probably wouldn't do this. So you gotta, you gotta be careful about the arroyos because water comes as a wall of water all of a sudden. So you, you gotta you know, pay attention to that. But we're after the storm here, everything's draining. Yeah, should be safe now but lots of water. Oh, ugh. so what we're looking for is some ponds. And I think I'm in the right place, but up here there should be some ponds. And, uh, I used to you know, fish in them and all kinds of stuff. And a little waterfall, but I heard it was all different since a hurricane like four or five years ago. And it's been that long since I've really been up here all this far. So I don't know what we're gonna find, but it's a nice day to find it. And it's so green. It's just crazy green. You know, it's not always like this. <laughs> you can sure see the pile of sand that just this little side stream piled up right there. Probably all just from, well, there was a hurricane, small hurricane about a week ago. But it's been raining hard. Last night it rained hard all night. So, yeah, but the, the change here, things can change so fast. That's why I'm just, I'm not sure if the pond's even still here. It might have just got blown out by the hurricane. If it's not right up here, either I'm in the wrong spot or it's just gone. I don't know, we'll see. Oh, mud. That's okay. Well, we've reached the top and there's no pond. I think it was below us and it's just, maybe the dam was blown out by the hurricane and there's just no more pond. I don't know. We're almost to the very top now. So, uh, you know what I need to do is, where I get the quads, can do rentals, you know, they do tours. I need to have Jimmy there, or one of his people, take us on a, a tour up here, because I'm just not 100% sure I'm in the right spot. But regardless, it's really cool to be up here after a big rain like this. 
how green it is and there's lots of butterflies and there's lots of everything. It's really a, a neat place, especially when it's green like this. It's cool. Welcome back to the dry desert of Southern Baja. I'm Justin Wolf. The unusual heavy rains have mixed things up a little, but Mick Saunders has still connected with his first Wahoo. They shake their heads a lot. So we have to keep that line tight. We always keep the, the, the boat moving forward to keep the hooks engaged. If we slow down for just a second, the fish will shake and we can lose them. So. those teeth. Those teeth are very, very sharp. So see the scissors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Very dangerous. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, yeah, Nick. Thanks job, man. Uh, a little bit less, but definitely a healthy fish. So, 30? Yeah. 35, maybe? No. Nice fish. Nice fish. The Wahoo is actually part of the tuna family. So uh -huh. it's part of the scobrid family, okay. which is tuna and mackerel. Okay. So the one thing about the Wahoo is, it's the species that is actually the most vicious. So yeah. as you saw, yeah. so when they hit a bait, they will come in, follow the bait, and then come in the side and cut the bait in half. Uh -huh. So absolutely voracious. So, and you can see by the teeth, here. No, I don't. They actually have a scissor action. Yeah, yeah. So they just slice that bait right in half and then they'll come around and clean up. So great fish. Congratulations. All right, all right. So what's different about trolling and, and landing Oahu is we're moving at a much faster speed of troll rate. So for Marlin and Dorado, we're trolling anywhere from six to seven knots. When we're trolling for Wahoo, we're going to push that to at least 9 or 10. 
the Wahoo like any kind of jigs moving through the water as fast as possible. So when we, we actually have Rapalas out and high speed trolling lures out, but when we're trolling all high speed trolling lures, we'll go as high as 15 knots. So one of the big things is if we do hook a Wahoo, we really have to keep that line tight. So we're gonna keep the boat moving forward. The angler is always gonna be putting pressure on the fish. If you let slack in the line for just a second, that Wahoo's gonna shake off those hooks. So once we get them close to the boat, we always wanna put two gaffs in them. One gaff, that fish can still shake off, especially if we get Wahoo up to 50, 60 pounds. And so now no, we're no talking to the guy from no Smokies yeah. okay. uh, about what to do with it. So we're gonna take some home with us, but we're also gonna have them take a nice filet and we're gonna have a nice dinner tonight over at Smokies. So that's what you do, you bring your fish in, and they'll take it for you, and you can have it prepared at the restaurant. And you don't have to do it at, you know, eat at Smokies. You could take it to the restaurant here at Palmas or at Playa or other places, and they'll do a good job. But uh, Smokies got a restaurant there that cook it up nice, and it's a good way to go. Could you be Justin Wolf? Yeah. I'm Bill oh. Vickery. I watch you all the time oh, on hey, TV. Hey, right on. So Thanks. I that is, Appreciate it. I, I knew who that is. <laughs> okay. That's cool. Yeah, man. cool. We got the, you might be part of the reason we come down here now. Uh, okay. <laughs> they say it's not an annual thing, but it yeah. seems like twice a year we come here. So yeah, so do I. Yeah. Twice yeah. a year, that's a good good amount to come yeah, down here. It is. Here. Yeah. You know, you got you. About the time it starts getting hectic, you just yeah. come out here. Yeah. Bit. You get some fish today. Got those up. My my. Right oh, you got oh you got a bunch of Dorado. Right on. Welcome back. Now, that was a great wahoo that Mick Saunders just landed, but of course there's other sport fish species on the East Gate, like these rooster fish, these giant rooster fish. This is a Japanese style fish print of an actual rooster fish from the East Cape. Now, rooster fish are considered a catch and release species, so prints like this are fairly rare. It's just not right to kill a rooster fish for a print. This one we found floating dead in the water. Unfortunately, someone had hooked it with a J-hook probably, and it just didn't survive. So we pulled it out of the water and I decided to make a print out of it. And it's just beautiful. There's an artist down there named Lyle Brunson who does these prints. He's the only one in the whole part of the world that can do this. And he works right out of the Van Warmer Resort. So anybody can bring in a fish, hopefully not a rooster fish, but anybody can bring in a fish like a Wahoo or Tuna or Dorado or something like that. And he'll make a beautiful print for you. Now, here's Mark Doherty with some more information about this beautiful art form, plus, the importance of using circle hooks. All right, hey everybody. So I wanted to show you something that's really important about hooks and the difference in hooks and how that can affect mortality rates in fish. So we're on the East Cape of Baja here. This is Mark Doherty, Baja uh, East, or, uh, East Cape guide, sorry. And so Mark's gonna show you a little something about the difference between J hooks and circle hooks with rooster fish. And that applies to most other types of fish too. And one of the most important aspects of fishing for roosters is fishing these circle hooks, these light wire circle hooks, as opposed to these J hooks. Now, what happens with these, uh, with the J hooks, they'll get gut hooked, they'll, these hooks will go into their gill plates and uh, they'll bleed out. And we lose a lot of big roosters to releases simply be because of boats using these J hooks. So, with a circle hook, again, 90% of the time, it's gonna go right in the corner of the mouth. And the really, really important thing here is that uh, we do not have gut hooked fish and we can have a healthy release. It's very, very important. Okay, so now we're gonna show you what happens. We were coming in here to fish and we saw a floating rooster fish. It was just floating on the surface dead. So we picked it up. Earl, you wanna show everybody? I mean, it is one heck of a beautiful fish. But unfortunately, it got gut hooked Let's get in there. Look at that. I mean, that's a monster, what, 55, 60 pound fish maybe? It's definitely over 60 pounds, and it's just a, an absolute tragedy that this fish couldn't be released healthy. So, and yeah. the cause of it is this J hook as opposed to this circle hook. The choice of your hook can mean the difference between a healthy release or not. So, this is a Japanese fish print called Giyotaku. Gyo means fish and taku means impression. So dating back to the 1800s, Japanese fishermen would document their catch 
by painting squid ink over the top of the fish and then laying either rice paper or mulberry paper over the top of the fish, rubbing it down and transferring the print of the fish onto the paper. So this rooster fish, uh, you know, we don't get too many rooster fish prints because we're constantly releasing the, the rooster fish. So it's pretty rare that we do get a print, but we did find this fish uh, down south and uh, it had expired before we could get to it and revive it. Um, you know, the Japanese say that the giotaku uh, actually preserves the spirit of the fish onto either the paper or in this case, we're using uh, muslin canvas. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but I know that this is a very unique way of preserving a trophy catch. And you can only find it here in Baja at Van Warmer Resorts. Instead of squid ink, we now actually use non-toxic acrylic paints. And that allows the fish to be cleaned, filleted, and consumed. So if you do catch a wahoo, tuna, dorado, you can have it printed and still have the fish processed after the printing is done. This is a muy grande rooster fish. And I would say conservative estimate is about 80 pounds. Unfortunately, we, we think that this fish probably died because it was hooked with a J hook. And it's really, really important that if you do come down, um, bring those circle hooks. Uh, you're gonna get a corner of the mouth hookup almost 90% of the time. And we really, really recommend using circle hooks on these roosters. Hey, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, there would be no show. So please thank them when you can. Now, get out there and do some great fishing.